Hello, my name is Melanie Ishola, welcoming you to Open Square, coming to you live from the ancient city of Ibadan, the your state capital in southwest Nigeria. Today, in the first of our regional series, we bring federal lawmakers, both from the Senate and House of Representatives, face to face with their constituents. We want to deepen the understanding of the role of National Assembly while giving lawmakers an opportunity to give an account of their stewardship. Constituents also will have an opportunity to tell their representatives what their problems truly are and what they believe their representative should do about it. Our people say, Agbajowo, Longberu Dori, roughly translated as, when we join hands, the job gets done easily. Open Square is brought to you by Daria Media in partnership with Channels Television and Radio Now, 95.3 FM, and is supported by the MacArthur Foundation. I'm happy to join you in this event. The role of parliament in a presidential democracy, such as we have in Nigeria, is often misunderstood by citizens, the media, stakeholders, and sometimes the legislators themselves. The role of the legislator as a lawmaker is well known, but less is known of the legislator's role as a policymaker, an advocate, a regulator of government, business, and a critical link between the citizen and the state. The limits of the legislator's authority and responsibilities are even less clearly understood. And as a consequence of this, the legislature and legislators are often held responsible for matters over which they have no control. At the same time, when legislative actions yield positive outcomes, the legitimate efforts of legislators to bring about those outcomes are either ignored or attributed to others. I am delighted, therefore, the Daria Media, in collaboration with the MacArthur Foundation, has taken up the task of bridging the gap of understanding by organizing this program to provide an avenue for constructive interactions between legislators and their constituents. This is an opportunity for education and enlightenment of each and every one of us. It gives legislators a chance to tell their own stories and to hear from their constituents so that from these interactions, we might achieve a level of understanding about the true nature of our democracy and clarity about the responsibilities citizens and legislators owe to each other. Citizens' active participation in politics and governance is the surest safeguard of democracy in the long term. However, active participation must be based on a thorough awareness of the process and practice of politics and, and government. Otherwise, we risk a situation where conversations about the governance of our country are dominated by the loudest voices rather than the most informed. In such a situation, propaganda thrives and our differences of opinion are easily exploited to exacerbate our existing fault lines. This is a danger that we must resist by all means, particularly through programs such as this that seek to increase understanding of how government works and how it ought to work. I thank the organizers for their efforts and I congratulate them on their vision. I hope that by the time this program is successfully conducted here in the Southwest region, it will continue through the other regions. I also hope that this will be an ongoing effort involving politicians at all levels of governance across our country. I thank all those who will be participating in this event for contributing in this way to the joint task of nation building. And I wish you all a successful event. Thank you. Welcome back. Now, if you're just joining us, this is Open Square. 
Adaria Media Production in partnership with Channels Television and Radio Now on 5.3 FM, Lagos, as well as supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Now I have with me the panel for the discussion today, and of course I will be starting by introducing one at a time. Indeed we have Senator Kola Balogu, is representing Oyo South Senatorial District. And of course I have Senator Olubumi Ayodeji at Detumbi and is representing Ekiti North Senatorial District. Followed by Senator Tolu Lokbe Odebiyi and is representing, yes, Ogun West Senatorial District. And of course here we have from the House of Representatives, Rep. Bamidele Salami. Which, who is representing Ede North and Ede South uh, constituency, Oshun State. Also, I have Representative Ibrahim Ayokunle and he's representing Ewekuru Federal constituency. E4, Ewekuru Federal constituency. Now, gentlemen, you're welcome. Yes, and um, I also would like to introduce to you Tokumbo Abiru, is a senator, and he has to join us via Zoom. And so this is why, where I get to say thank you so much for coming onto the program today. We think that this is a really great opportunity for the people to get to meet their leaders, in this case, their lawmakers. And so when it is time, the audience will have the opportunity to ask the questions and of course, there is a stand right there at the center where you can proceed to give your questions to the lawmakers. That said, we will proceed straight to the business that we have today. And from the speech that we heard um, the Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila give, it's very apparent that there is a lot of misunderstanding of what the role of legislators are. And that is where we will begin. And I'll start with you, sir, by asking exactly how you would explain to the people the job that you do. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. My name once again is Kola Balogun. I represent Oyo South Senatorial District. I'm from Oyo State. Therefore, on behalf of the progressive people of Oyo South Senatorial District, on behalf of the progressive governor and government of Oyo State, I welcome you all to Ibadan, the capital of the universe. <laughs> Indeed. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, to go straight to your question, the role of a legislator at any level, be it federal, state, and indeed local level, can be put in three baskets. One is your responsibility as a legislator to join forces with your colleagues to make laws impactful laws in the best interest of the nation. The second one is to do what we call oversight function. As a legislator, you're not just there to pass budgets for agencies and ministries. You should also ensure proper implementation of the budget. Therefore, we'll engage in what we call oversight function. The third one is your responsibility to attract federal presence into your district. You have to ensure that projects, programs, policies that are designed are meant to have positive impact on the lives of the people of your district are well implemented. So to my mind, these are the three main functions of a legislator. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. But indeed, I could say, if I went digging up about this, I would find this. 
And then I'd say we go straight into the processes of getting this done. When you do this, exactly how do you go about it? Well, we break it down, for example, if you were to um, scrutinize a list of ministers, for example, in performing one of your functions, how exactly do you determine this? And I will be going to you, sir, Senator. Please kindly react to this, and I apologize for not bringing up your name. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Senator Adetumbi. 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 And I represent Ekiti North. Thank you. Um, just to, you know, ride on where my colleague left, the, the, the representative has three functions, like he said. First is that of a representative. Because without being a representative, you cannot even make laws. You cannot advocate, and you cannot attract uh, whatever it is, federal projects, state projects, into your constituency. So the fundamental, the fundamental and the foundation of the duty of a legislator is to represent people. Uh, and, and this is what gives him the doorway and the opportunity to play other, other functions uh, of, of a legislator. And as a representative, you, you become the voice of the constituents that you represent. How do you represent their voice? The way you vote, the arguments you present and submit, and the positions you take on national issues must, reflect, it must, must reflect the aspirations of the people that voted you into office. Their ideologies, their beliefs, their expectations, and their worldview of the nation, because it's an assembly of different configuration of ethnicities, of cultures, of religion, of different people across the length and breadth of the country. So if you like, it's a marketplace of ideas and a place of negotiation of interests and balancing of this interest in the best interest of the country such that every part of the country is heard, is listened to, and their opinion is carried along in the decision-making of, of, um, of, the, of, the, of the Senate in, in this case, and I believe also in the House of Representatives. Whether it is policy, whether it is budget, whether it is oversight, whether it is um, you know, ensuring that the federal system works in the best interest of the entire country, don't forget, this is a federation of near independent subnational governments that have their aspirations, their governments at state levels, at local levels, and sending representatives to the center to make sure that the interest of the subnationals uh, is not compromised and their views are listened to. Uh, without taking too much time, Thank I'd like you. to stop here. Thank you. And um, you did expand you know, very well on that. So I'll equally be going to um, the Senator um, Odebiyi, and I apologize again. So Senator Odebiyi, my question to you would be that you kindly give to me what the relationship is like between the upper chamber and the lower chamber. So the Senators now and the House of Representatives, how do you relate? And for this ninth assembly, is the relationship that cordial? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, a uh, very good morning to everybody. Um, as you know, the legislative powers of the National Assembly is listed under Section 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and which is the legislative powers to the National Assembly and which has been represented by the Senate and the House of Reps. Now, these are two independent uh, institutions, if you want to say that, but also we work uh, harmoniously together. Um, what normally happens is that uh, each house has uh, the opportunity to raise their own bills or their own motions and, and uh, argue their various points. And once they are able to uh, pass, especially if they raise a bill or, or uh, 
and they were able to pass the various stages of the process. Uh, the bills are now sent over either from them to us or from them or from us to them. And uh, then there's, there's, uh, the bill is now uh, being debated at the, both houses and if it's passed, that's good. If there's differences, there will be a concurrence and uh, which uh, the two uh, select committee uh, will meet and they'll go over the various uh, the differences and iron them out. And uh, so that's how we work uh, harmoniously together. Thank you. So what you've said in essence is uh, you're sort of dependent on each other. Thank you so much for that. We go on a very quick break to return shortly. Open Square is waiting on you. Don't go away. back you're watching open square and this is a town hall meeting provided so we can have a platform for the gathering of lawmakers and their constituents this is a daria media production and of course in partnership with channels television and radio now 95.3 fm and supported by the macarthur foundation now earlier i introduced the distinguished lawmakers that we have here. And again, I will go over, starting um, from the Senator Olubumi Adetumbi of Ekiti North Senatorial District. Thank you so much for coming. And indeed, the distinguished Senator Odebi Yitolulokme Akinremi of Ogun West Senatorial District. And the distinguished Senator Ademola Kola Balugun of Oyo South Senatorial District. Indeed, we have from the House of Assembly. But before I go there, we also have the Senator Abiru, who's joining us virtually. And from the House of Representatives, Rep. Ibrahim Babajide Obanikoro, who will be joining us as well. But here seated, we have Rep. Bamidele Salam of Eden North, Eden South, Egbedore, and Ejibo of Oshun State. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, I think I also have here seated uh, the very representative of the, 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 the speaker, the representative of the speaker, and I have Rev. Isiaka Badebo Ibrahim. Isiaka Ibrahim, and I had to do this again and mess it up. I'm just going to make fun of this and we're all going to have fun doing this. However, before we left off, we spoke about the relationship that exists between the two tiers of the National Assembly. And indeed, I would like to begin this part by talking to the issue of some Nigerians saying that we cannot afford the two tiers of parliament that we're currently operating. And so um, I would begin with um, Senator Isiaka. Uh, the Rep. Isiaka, to kindly please give to me what he thinks about the public opinion that we cannot af af afford uh, the two tiers of the legislature that we have. Thank you very much. Good morning. Distinguished uh, senators here, my honorable colleague, and the public and the media. I'm Honorable Rep. Ibrahim Ayokunli Isiaka. I represent the very good people of Ifo, a weak federal constituency. I'm from Ogun State. Thank you, sir. Proudly Ogun State, the fastest growing economy in Nigeria, Ogun State. Thank you very much for that question. It's obvious uh, since I joined the National Assembly that uh, the public opinion uh, has been so diverse in terms of uh, having a single parliament rather than having the House of Representatives and that of the Senate. I guess that was your question. Am I right with that? Because you said whether we should have one or two. Yes, sir. Okay. You see, every society will get what we want and uh, make good use of them to achieve progress for the, for the country. It's so unfortunate that in this climb, the rules of the National Assembly is so much misplaced or not really understood 
by the public. And as much as the image makers of the National Assembly, even members of the National Assembly themselves, at the Senate and the House of Representatives, as much as we try to change the narratives, put the trajectory and the proper perspective out there to the public, still is not well understood. Yeah, we can no longer say as a young democracy, we've grown and uh, we ought to have grown steadily with the intent and purposes for uh, how, what came about the drafters of the constitution that made us to have the House of Representatives and that of the Senate. House of Reps just 360, Senate just 109 put together. And then you now look at Espans, that's where the entire two chambers cover in the country. Look at the society, how heterogeneous. You'll agree with me that even if the constitution we want three chambers, it would not have been enough to cover the duties, functions, and responsibilities that the National Assembly in the country are doing. So, wholeheartedly, maybe we still need to go out there, like this forum where we are, and every other fora that people are taking time to explain, to still let Nigerians have a positive thinking about the rules that the National Assembly, how important we should have this first institution as mentioned in the Constitution, and the role playing, not as a watchdog, but these three, as well espoused by my distinguished senators, you can't wish them away. They look minute, put in a basket, as he said. But when you now pour out what is in the basket, you are not talking about 200 million people. In, indeed, Rep. Isiaka. So we're saying there is a lot to be done. And if you could even move a motion, we would have a three-tier legislature, but we're not going to have it. Because what we are asking is, in essence, this is put vis-a-vis -vis the economic reality on ground in the country. And I think that's where that public opinion stand from. So we're going to come back to that. Thank you so much for your response. While I go over to Zoom to Senator Abiru. And of course, he tells me what the challenges he faces in doing his job are. Can you kindly provide answers to this? Good morning. I hope you can hear me. That's for the National Assembly. What, in your view, you are the you. challenges? Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Good morning. Um, number one, um, good morning, my distinguished colleagues. I can see um, Senator Adetumbi, Senator Balogun, and Odebi, and I can see some other legislators there. Right. Um, good morning to every one of you and um, the organizers of the event as well. To say um, a very um, good morning to everyone. And I sincerely apologize that I couldn't come over to Ibadan physically. Um, having said that, my name, my name is Senator Tukumbo Apiu, and I represent um, the good people of Lagos East, East Senatorial District. Um, so to the question as to, I think the question has to do with the challenges, or what did you call it? Go ahead, please. Hello? Yes, please. Yeah, you want it? Uh, go. Could okay. you take your question um, again? When I you asked, say challenge, that my, what challenges do I face? I'd ask, not just for you, but for the entire are, National Assembly. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah? Yes, what yeah. I asked wasn't just about you. It was about the entire National Assembly. What are the challenges you and your colleagues face in administering your duties? Well, um, let me first put it this way. Um, for me, I, am, I, I don't know how much of my presence in the National Assembly that you know, but I think I should also set that context. So I came into um, the um, National Assembly precisely, I think about just about a year ago, um, arising for the loss of one of our, I mean, the loss of my predecessor in office. Um, so I technically came in, I think, on the, on the 15th of um, December 20, 
20. Yes, so exactly one year now. Now, um, when you talk about challenges, I think generally for all organizations, I would say, I mean, the, the reason why we all set out every day um, to go to work or to do one thing or the other is, of course, to handle challenges. Um, but specifically speaking to the National Assembly, um, uh, what I would say is that um, <clears throat> from my own standpoint, I think that um, I would first like to look at it from what are the roles that um, a typical legislature should be playing. And I'll see them from the lawmaking angle, uh, policy influencing angle, and also the oversight. So if you ask me, um, <clears throat> I can say that to a very large extent today, I mean, we're getting the desired cooperation and then, um, of course, the issue of the separation of powers to our well well, um, well um, entrenched within the, all the three arms of government. So, um, speaking, I mean, trying to think of um, whether there are specific problems that we face for now, um, I would just, my, my, my point to be that, um, I mean, they are, they are not particularly different from the normal um, uh, challenges you have in any place of work, which is, I mean, uh, Many at times things will go smoothly, and at times you will have some rough edges, which of course you just have to handle. But I can't, I mean, from an organization setting, I mean, um, confirm to you that these are the specific problems that I see in the National Assembly. Okay, thank you so much, Senator Abiru. And that sort of looks to me that, again, you have been able to help us uh, firm up what we already know. But what we do not know, as you have rightly pointed yeah. out, that we, there must be issues. In every human union gathering, there must be one or two challenges that we face. And I think, so far, I've not had Rep. Bamidele speak, and I will be allowing Rep. Bamidele kindly share with me with the House of Representatives, which is where you operate, what are the challenges in there that isn't known to the common man in Nigeria? Well, thank you very much. Once again, my name is Bamidele Salam. I represent Ede North, Ede South, Ede Bedore, Ejibwe Federal Constituency of Osho State. And um, talking about challenges, like uh, my distinguished uh, senator just said, in every human organization, especially where you have an assemblage of people of diverse background, social, political, religious background, temperamental background, all manner of diversities you can have, assembling together under a roof and meant to come up with a single decision on any matter, certainly you are bound to have uh, a few challenges. And this is the beauty of democracy, because democracy itself is an aggregation of different opinions, views, and approaches to solving issues. So um, in Nigeria today, we have quite a number of uh, political parties, even though the most dominant are the People's Democratic Party and the All Progressive Congress. And so there are times when issues might be addressed from the um, partisan um, point of view. And so the leadership of the House will have a challenge in terms of building a bipartisan approach to such issues. There are times also that um, issues may come up to the House and then uh, you can have geopolitical interest. Let me give you an example. There was a time that the President um, sent in a request to uh, obtain some loans and uh, he attached projects which the loans were to be applied to. And uh, a certain geopolitical zone felt that it had not been properly considered in those projects, in the distribution of the project which the loans are meant to be applied to. And, um, you know, naturally, you know, they felt that um, that request should not pass. So it behoves on the leadership of the House, whenever there are issues like that, to seek um, maybe a backhand or back, you know, back end um, negotiation, discussion, to ensure that everybody comes on board um, and also make wide consultations with the executive. There are times also that you have challenges of uh, resources because, because even though you know, people out there believe that the institution has a lot of resources to function, the reverse, we just believe, is that not so? No, the reverse is the case. Uh, the truth is that there are, there are many times that the institution also uh, gets hampered in its operations as a result of lack of adequate resources to function. A committee of the House, and don't forget that the, the Constitution 
um, uh, empowers the House to operate through committees, section 62, verse, uh, uh, subsection 1. Where you have committees needing to operate for a certain length of time and requiring certain expertise, some of which may not even be readily available, it takes a lot of resources. And such committees, just because we have to operate within the available resources, is also, is also a challenge. Um, another challenge I can immediately also think about is the challenge that is also thrown up by the bicameral nature of the institution. There's no doubt that the bicameral uh, nature of the institution allows for a deeper engagement, deeper involvement. But then, if one house passes a, a bill into law, it will need the concordance of the other house. So, it may slow down the process. There are times, we, you know, you saw a few examples when we were passing the Electoral Act. One house passes a particular version on the uh, issue of transmission of results. The other chamber passed a, a different, and then you have That's to have right. a conference. So, that may take Sometimes, So I, I think these are some of the challenges I personally observe in the operations of the House. But the important thing is that the leadership always finds a way to rise above those challenges and, and provide solutions to them. Thank you so much. I'll say you've provided us so much context. And now we understand that there could be relational, financial, and sometimes maybe in principle, by, ens by essence, how the National Assembly itself is set up in a way that sometimes it could hamper the work that you have to do. Now, we go straight to have the constituents talk. And indeed, there are two microphones on either side of the hall, and you can proceed um, one at a time to ensure that you use the microphone. And please remember that right now, the focus is on the role of the parliament and your representatives. Do not ask questions that do not stay within this focus. Let us take it one at a time as we will be going to other functions of the National Assembly. Please if you have, please if you have any question, kindly come forward and the questions will be fielded. Thank you. Kindly introduce yourself and the constituency that you represent. I, I want to first congratulate the organizer of this. This is a uh, agenda setting template for our legislatures. And sincerely, I appreciate the senators and the reps of the city. Could you come again with your name? I think it wasn't captured. Wahid Saka, as pronounced. Thank you. And uh, the question is this. They have stated the challenges they are facing. But it's challenges the public is facing, having them, 360 and 109, is the issue that is disconnecting them from the people. The question of accountability, the question of connecting back to the constituents. There was a particular group in Osho. Why, Saka, did you hear that we're going to get to other aspects? in the course of this conversation? For starters, we want to know what questions you have that relate to their role as lawmakers. The, 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 this, this is, I'm laying the background now. Okay. And the question is this. How do they want to connect back? The role starts from the people, and it will end with them. So how do they want to connect back to the society? Those are the first questions that they need to answer. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Can we have the next question, please? Again, your name, the constituency you represent, and please be very brief. Thank you. Well, good morning. My name is Engineer Olawo Inyakintunde. I am from Ogun State, precisely Abekota South local government. Well, distinguished senators and the rep, I congratulate you at least for coming forward for this program. Well, my, I have a lot of questions, but since you ask us to restrict it to their role as a representative, I want to direct my question to Senator Debbie, who is from West Senatorial District. I am, my mother is from that uh, place, and I'm aware, I congratulate you because I'm aware of your empowerment programs, especially the school you are building, my alma mater, Alamua Grammar School. I congratulate you for that, and I pray that God will continue to strengthen you. My question to you now, I'm aware that Senator passed some of the bill you sponsored, and uh, 
the question is that what is the stage of those bills that you have actually sponsored? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, so, do we have any more questions before we have um, our lawmakers give their yeah. responses? Good okay. morning. Okay. And that's the last one. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. All protocols are duly observed. My name is Emiola Solomon from Oyo Street here, Oyo Central Senatorial District. My question is this. According to Abraham Lincoln, he said, democracy is the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. My question goes through for that. Is it the will of the people that supersede the will of the party when it comes to decision making at the National Assembly? Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh, well, indeed, um, distinguished gentlemen, you have heard your people and it is time to, fight, to provide responses to what they have asked. And I think, um, if you would, we'll start from the very top, and that was Oshun State, and um, we can then begin to bring it down. Uh, thank you so much, Rep. Bamidili. Thank you very much. Um, uh, my good friend, Wahid Saka, asked the question about um, connecting with the people, which is a very, very important issue in democracy because um, without the people, the whole essence of democracy is lost. And I want to say that um, at least the vast majority of lawmakers that I know are people who are very well connected to their people back home um, through various means. I'm sure he knows my own involvement in my own constituency, for example. I've been home in the last one week um, and uh, hardly will there be a fortnight that I will not be home. Uh, to engage with my people in different communities. And I'm sure that many other lawmakers also, um, you know, do that. So um, if, if a lawmaker, properly so-called, disconnects from the people, there is no way he will function optimally. There's no way he will have results. And um, we see that, you know, often uh, uh, in the activities of lawmakers. And let me quickly just uh, also, uh, uh, you know, talk to the, um, the man who answered the last question, uh, who talked about whether the opinion of the people count over the opinion of political parties. And I want to say that in most cases, yes. In most cases in the, in the parliament, um, people rise above political affiliation. There are so many instances where people have come together across party lines to um, address issues, to pass laws, and, and to uh, support motions you know, across party lines. It happens most often, even though there are times when Political parties also have their influence on members, and uh, I don't think that is um, entirely out of the way. Even from advanced democracies, uh, we have issues that political parties are deeply interested in, and they try to make members of, uh, of their party in parliament to push those agenda on the parliament. But I want to say that in most cases, um, you know, public interest overrides uh, political party affiliation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rep. Bambi Zede. But I think with the last person, the focus of his question might have as well been that uh, if politics was defined as uh, government of the people, by the people, for the people, if indeed it is the people that are represented in the National Assembly. Yeah, but, but, but yeah, the people are represented. That's exactly what I've said. <laughs> okay. It's because it is, the, it is the view and the aspiration of the people that drives whatever position a lawmaker takes on the floor of the parliament. But I'm saying in relation to what he asked about political parties, he actually mentioned that whether political party interest should. Political party members are also part of the people. They are members of the public. They are part of the public that we represent. But I say that in most cases, people rise above political party affiliation and any other, you know, um, uh, primordial, you know, sentiment to canvas positions and advocate, you know, for um, uh, laws or policies that will serve the general interest of the people. Okay. Certainly, yes. And I have so many examples. All right. But because of time, we won't be taking the examples. It would also be great to know um, if sometimes um, the political interests sort of um, clash. For example, if um, what you are supposed to get the people represented on is not what is maybe like the popular consensus within um, the house. How do you um, navigate this to ensure that you're able to get the people? And, but I will not be going to you, Rep. Bamidele, so I can allow uh, another person to respond. I know that we had somebody from Oyo State who asked a question, so I think I'll allow um, the Senator Kolab Alugun to answer this, as well as the question that your constituent had asked. 
So um, the person who asked the question from Oyo, please can we have you? Yes, Oyo please. Cent Oyo Central. So it's right. of painful thing that you don't know, see so that if you have to speak. The question simply goes directly that is it the will of the people that supersede the will of the political party? All right. You heard him. Yeah, I heard him. Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, you said you quoted Abraham Lincoln that democracy is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. At the same time, we must realize that in our kind of democracy, where you need to have a platform to contest for an election, which is a political party platform, uh, before you get to become a candidate, before you get to canvass for people's votes. So the party is important. The people are even more important. Therefore, in a situation where you have a clash of interest between what your political party wants you to do as a legislator and what your people want you to do, Sometimes it's a very difficult, very tight situation because a legislator will now find itself living within, between the rock and the hard place. But I suspect that most politicians, most politicians will go by the will of the people because eventually you say you're still accountable to them. Let me also give you an instance. When you find a senator or rep that's coming back to the Senate to qualify to become what they call a ranking senator or ranking member of the House of Rep, that particular parliamentarian must be doing something right. In other words, for me, he must be doing things to ensure that the yearnings and aspirations of his people are met, sometimes over and above uh, party uh, solidarity or party affiliation. So that's one of the challenges, if you, if you like, that we face, the times when you may have to look at what the party position is. And if it's in contrary, if it's in contrary, it's not, not in, in tandem with what your people want then it, depend, it depends on an individual parliamentarian to take that hard decision. But to my mind, most parliamentarians who be on the side of the people, for me, it is a sensible thing for, to do. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, indeed, we will move this conversation a bit forward, still on the questions that have been fielded here, but I will be asking the mechanisms of, available such that um, the constituents are able to get across to their lawmakers in getting to let you know exactly what their expectations are of you. And I think we also, uh, we have had Oshun State, or Yosset, we had Ogun State from the people who had asked the question. So I'll be going to um, the distinguished senator from Ogun State. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let me just go back to what was said earlier on about uh, the, 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 the perception or the challenges between the constituents and legislators. Yes. One of the big issues is the issue of expectations and perception. I think, and that's why for all like this enables people to really understand. And I think what we, one of the challenges we legislators are facing is the level of expectation sometimes from the constituents or from the citizens. And I think a lot of these has been exacerbated by the breakdown of the local governments and really you are the closest thing they have uh, short of them getting access to the governor. So their own expectation has, has heightened in the sense that they expect you to come and fix or to come and do even the minutest of things and not realizing your rule sometimes doesn't enable you to do such, such things. So their own perception of what you should be doing 
is totally uh, invariant to the realities of what, what you normally do. So they want you to fix the road, take the days, do the thing. And I mean, you are wondering, you don't have a budget. You don't have the means to do that. You can advocate and all that. The other issue that I find is also the limit of uh, power sometimes. There are times as legislators when you, you, you raise motions or you are generally concerned about certain issues. But those issues can only be taken as far as the executives are willing to act on them. Because really, there's, I mean, so once you've raised them, you've, uh, you've, um, you've made a point about it, it's become a national issue. Now it's left to the executives to not act on it. So sometimes maybe they don't act fast enough sometimes as you wish. So, and that's also an issue which you have to, I mean, I remember because I, I represent a border community, for instance. And when the issue of border closing came about, obviously it affected the livelihood of those that live around those areas, in Pokea and some of these other areas. And there's a lot of agitations with all things about the policy, it was just very abrupt and all things like that. And I, I think at one point, they even said maybe 20 kilometers away, no fuel can be taken to the border area. So that affected tremendously the livelihood of those that had businesses in those communities. So as much as you raise it, you are concerned about it, you feel for your people, the suffering, the masses. But if it's a policy and everything, it, it, you know, the government has made their policy based on their own uh, decision. And so yes, it, thank, thank you so much, Senator. Um, indeed, we have to go on a break now. You did talk about um, what um, the, these expectations are, but we also need to deepen that when we come back, especially on the mechanism. You have been watching Open Square. It is a production of Darian Media as supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Don't go away. Welcome back. Indeed, uh, we have had a great time today talking to the legislators as well as the constituents. You're watching Open Square. This is a town hall meeting between legislators and their constituents, providing an opportunity for the lawmakers to explain exactly what their jobs are and the roles that they play in serving the people and equally giving the people an opportunity to tell the lawmakers what really their problems are and giving them what their expectations of them are. Now, that said, this is a production of Diary Media in partnership with Channels Television and Radio Now, 95.3 FM, and of course, supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Indeed, before we left, we talked about expectation, and yes, we're going to start with that again. I'm going to Senator Tokumbo Abiru, as it gives us is opinions about the issue of expectation before we bring it back to the whole year. Let's have you. Okay. All right. Once again, Ben, thank you very much <clears throat> because at the moment I thought I'd lost the audio connection again, but um, thankfully it's back. Now, so yeah. in terms of expectations, and I think I'd like to take you from where my colleague, um, Senator Debbie, um, um, stopped and also try to link it up to also connecting with the society and all of that. You know, so for me, I think that um, the role that we play clearly uh, is one that requires, I mean, regular um, um, contact with the people. So for me, um, what I, based on the experience of part of what I experienced during the campaign period and all of that, I realized that it was important that uh, I kind of, I mean, I set up a structure um, that can facilitate, you know, a very quickly, um, get, I mean, uh, that can facilitate the contact that you, you, are, you are meant to have with the people that you represent. So, as an example, I cover about uh, five major local governments and um, 11 local government and lo um, local um, um, LCDs, which is Local Government Development Authority in Lagos, making 16. So, and of course, my, um, my place of work is, uh, is Abuja, but one thing I can confirm, I come um, almost twice monthly, that's number one, but even beyond that, you know, I had to put in a structure where people can actually get across the route. So what do I mean? 
So in, um, in all in the five major local governments, and the remaining 11 are subsets of the, of the five. So you have um, Kurudu, you have Epe, for those who know Lagos very well, you have the Petuleki, and you have Oshofe and um, and, um, and um, Shomudu and Pariga, correct? Now, so in those five modern local governments, like I'd like to describe it, so I have a constituency office and four liaison offices there, and they are properly manned. You know, the essence is that people should be able to go there when I am not around, or when I come around, that is perhaps where I will sit. And these are um, um, structures that are manned, you know, on, on a daily basis. And beyond that, and even with that structure itself, so I also have a network platform in terms of um, um, how letters or whatever communication that they gather, you know, that they can put together and forward to me via electronic platform. And I will deal with all the letters there. So with that, you know, the constant thought with the people, I'm sure, is not lost. That I can, I can tell. Then, of course, that is also backed by the fact that I also try to come almost on a regular basis, I mean, twice in a month, so I try to show up and I, of course, meet with the, the people and the party leaders. But I will say that it's not to take away what my colleague was talking about, perception and expectations. Part of what I've also realized is that, look, I, I, <clears throat> I think that <clears throat> what we are meant to be dealing with is quite uh, humongous, if I can describe it as that. But what I also see is that people, the expectations of people at times perhaps misplaced. Things that ordinary local government people should be fixing, they want to fix. Okay, you thank know, you. I'll answer, take it away from there, Senator Adetokubo Abiru. I'll have to take it away from there where we will get the constituents here seated to also react to what you have said. Clearly, it is... Um, very evident that the lawmakers know that their constituents have expectations of them. And if that's something we're taking away from all of this, I think it is good enough. And so I will be opening um, the line for our constituents here present. And again, if I can say, these are constituents from the six states of the southwestern region. And of course, when you take the mic pods, ensure that you give us your name, your, your constituency, and please stick to the question, or in essence, the focus of the conversation. This time around, we want to know what your expectation is of your lawmaker. And I'm sure there is a lawmaker from your state here represented. Oh, thank you. My name is Olada Kwaola Oli, and I'm from Elisha Local Government. That's Elisha East West, Atakumosa East West Federal Constituency, Oshun East Senatorial District. Now, I, I want to take the issue from where we started, from where Senator Kolabalogun expounded on what the roles of the legislature should be, and particularly talked about policy. And now, going from there, fortunately for us in Nigeria, as of today, I am bold to say that we have the finest set of Nigerians that we can have in the National Assembly at this particular point in time, in terms of academic qualification and in terms of intellect. But unfortunately, much as we expect from what we see, what we see seems to be in reverse to what we know. What we know is what I just said, that in terms of academic qualification, in terms of where they're coming from and intellect, we have them. And of course, we could see the example from where we are gathered. Those who have been invited are those who have pedigree. But unfortunately, let me state this very clearly. Your expectation. The expectation, are, this is the, the, in this regime, Nigeria has taken more loan than it has ever taken before. And unfortunately, everybody keeps crying, but the National Assembly keeps passing. And we begin to wonder what will happen to generations yet unborn on the issue of these loans. Again, when you now attach to what those loans are meant to do, you see currently you see establishment of universities from those loans as projects that government is implementing. But unfortunately, those who are in existence are unsustainable as it stands now. They are underfunded. There are issues of sustainability. Nigeria producing graduates that cannot probably compete with others. Now we are establishing more. Again, I go to the issue of the National Assembly not deeply concerned with the issue of security, which is the primary responsibility of government in the Constitution. We see a situation of high insecurity in Nigeria today. 
As it is now, some of us cannot move from Ibadan to Shogbo or Elisha where we live once it's 5 p.m. Now, we want to know and we want to encourage the National Assembly because the way it is, nobody is safe again. And it is their primary responsibility to all those who are in executive position to, 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 to account in order to protect us, to make policies that will protect us as Nigerians, which is a key issue that is currently battling us in the nation. Then again, the one that is setting us in the face now. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I think you've said enough, and we've been able to take um, two to three key points from what you said. Don't let's, uh, you know, get them muddled up so that we can have adequate responses to them. Indeed, um, he's given some expectations right there, but I will be bringing it back before we bring it again to constituents. So please kindly bear with me as we field responses to this. And that specifically um, was a constituent from Oshu, if I am correct. And so I think we should uh, first have um, an Osho lawmaker give a response to that. However, to build a sort of context for, uh, context for that, I want to talk on the fact that this sort of speaks to the rubber stamp issues that people say may be the Ninth National Assembly sort of uh, serves as an appendage to the um, executive arm of government. How that, as they bring it, there is sort of like an express assent, you know, to do the wills, wills and the biddings of the executive. Is that so? Is that not in line with what your constituent has asked? So, so you, you, you will quickly react to this so we can go to um, the very Thank Rep. You. Isiaka, as I have not had him okay. uh, say anything to us. Thank you very much. The, the, the issue of uh, expectations are very wide. The first thing I want to let us know is that uh, the Constitution has clearly defined roles and responsibilities. Let me take the issue of security, which my dear friend spoke about. I'm not sure that any other issue has, has taken the attention of this National Assembly as security in the last two and a half years. Hardly will a session pass without this issue of security coming up for discussion, for debate, and for resolutions in the House. In fact, the House of Reps went a step further to organize a special security summit of about 32 members of the House. I was privileged to be one of the 32 sitting down for one week at the National Intelligence Agency to discuss security and listen to experts and propose solutions. But that is where our powers stop. There is a commander-in-chief of the armed forces. There are service chiefs, there is a national security advisor, and all other people who are charged with the powers to execute those resolutions. And when they fail to execute, especially the service chiefs, you know how many times we made resolutions for the removal of the former service chiefs before they were removed. So I want to assure you that the powers that the National Assembly has to ensure that things are done right in terms of security we have been applying those powers. Thank you so and much. And there is a limit to which Thank you so uh, you know, we can go. I won't be able to take beyond that so that I can have Rep. Isiaka. And indeed, it's going to be his first time of giving responses you know, to um, the constituents. Kindly help me weigh in heavily on the things, the issues that have been raised. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Distinguished uh, Senators, my colleague. Um, I've followed the questions so far. And everything still boils down to why we are here. Uh, it's so unfortunate that we have able, well enlightened, vibrant people in the country. Um, unfortunately, just like what someone said one time, that if you want to hide a good information from a man, just keep it inside a book. Uh, we have not taken pains to read the Constitution. We have not really taken pains to look at the rules of the legislators. Good enough, I'm very happy today that so far no one has accused the National Assembly of violating the same Constitution they created that to govern the country. But mostly, we have not really looked at the rules. And of course, truly and truly, if we go out to campaign as legislators, 
we are not going to tell our people that I'm only going there to make laws for you. So because of that, it makes people have a different opinion and expectations. We are not able to really define the act of lawmaking and that of what the executive, even from the local government up to the federal, should do and the demand of the citizens from those arms of government. Because we are lawmakers, I've not seen where the public will stop uh, a judicial officer and now say, you have not come to third my road. Because the mindset is tailored that the judge is not to third the road. Of course, if he's influential, he can talk to the people in the executive. Unfortunately, it is not known to the public that as legislators, that is the same and limitation we have. Maybe you are not helping us understand it by keeping up appearances and doing constituency projects. Literally, some would say to score goals, maybe to come back again when you are being voted for. So if we are clear that it is not the role of the legislators to actually engage um, in constituency projects as we do have them. So, it may be easier for the people to not expect that. It's Building of roads or construction of roads and what have you. Can we then quickly talk Thank on, Thank Wait, on security as he raised and the loan issues I'll, I'll, as he has rightly I'll answer those that. ones too. Right. Unfortunately, there is still a misused language. Constituency project. Kindly, kindly educate us on this. It's a misused language. The no legislator, being it of Senate and the House of Representatives that anywhere anything is defined as say, it's an intervention project. And that is, you have to go and lobby, beg, appeal, just like you would do to any rich man around your area to say, come and help us do this. That is what we do. And if you don't do it, your people will ask you, what are you doing there? So when they say they give constituency projects, to legislators. That's why I said it's not a proper use of language. But we lobby, we beg, we appeal, we talk to ourselves in groups and individually, collectively, to talk to those in the executive, those in charge of projects that, please, my people are suffering. I want this to be done. Please help us put it as part of what you are doing. Thought, okay, so th those considerations are given. But it's not for the legislators to executives of such projects. It's for the executive to execute. And then still, because what you are policing, you are not going to be the same person doing it directly by yourself. If the projects, if the budgets are well funded, up to 100%, you have such a project completed right and on time. If not, if what is allocated in a year is just 10% of what they put on the project for you, that is the extent of what the, what the project will be carried out. So the pressure will now come upon you from your constituents. Now that, oh, you started this drainage, you started this primary school, you, not again, this, the federal government, it will be referred to you. Because you want your people to know that you facilitated this project, you sponsored this project, you appealed that this project should be brought. But if it's not well funded, and you, if such a project is critical to the people, you have to find money anywhere. Okay, thank you so much. I'm just going to have to interject. Then for the security. Yes, sir. Uh, still, the same narrative. A rider from what my colleague has just said. Still from the Constitution, our rule, even irrespective, as the senior senator said, the public first. Even if that's opinion of your party, okay, but the public is superior, Okay. To the party. Thank you so, so much. I will be taking it away so that I can quickly have um, Senator um, Kola uh, Balogun here. And indeed, I would like to know from what um, Rep. Isiaka has said. I'm interested in why instead the, the lawmakers are not making it easier for the people by rightly educating the people on um, why this intervention project shouldn't be theirs and why you have simply taken it on and sort of like leading the people on in doing it. So when they come back with these things, 
Would you rather just educate and then not take responsibilities that are not yours? Thank you very much. Well, let me begin by commending the, uh, the gentleman that asked the question. Uh, first and foremost, we tend not to remember that we have separation of powers and, of course, separation of responsibilities and duties. Our role, like I said earlier, first is to ensure that you liaise with your colleagues and make laws in the best interest of the nation. Of course, oversight function and attracting federal presence. And this is why we get it all mixed up. Constituency projects are projects that you make additional efforts to ensure that they get into the budget during budget preparation that will be beneficial to your constituency. Sometimes you go out, out of your way to ensure that you have things that are expected by your constituents. Well, these constituency projects are not meant for us to implement. I'll give you an example. Just yesterday, I went to inspect a road project at uh, Old Ife Road, off Old Ife Road, there's a road leading to the spare parts uh, markets in, at, gate. At, in Gate. I went there. Uh, I had lobbied for that project from Ministry of Works. And I got them to put it in the budget. I didn't even know that the implementation had commenced. Some of my, my constituents in the neighborhood approached the contractor or the engineer on site and asked who is responsible and my name was mentioned. So they were the ones that called me to say this project is on. And I said, thank God, I'm happy about it. So I was there yesterday to see how it's been implemented. Uh, so it is not my responsibility to implement it. It is my responsibility to lobby for it. It is my responsibility to ensure that it is implemented to the letter. Thank you. So, so to that extent, that is basically our role. But on issue of security, if I may come in. Very quickly. I am a member of the Senate Committee on Army. And I know that this National Assembly has there's a, there's a lot of things that we do, that we do in a closed door session. We had met with the head of security agencies. But you know, security matters are very sensitive matters. Not everything that we discuss that we can put in the public domain. But I can tell you that we're doing our best. Just last week, we just came back from Idogori on oversight function. Thank you. So and, I wouldn't be taking more than that, um, Honorable, uh, sorry, Senator Kola Balogo. Okay. And indeed, I will be going ahead to field just one question before we go on this break. And in, yes, I know that you were ready with your question the other time. Could you please come and take the question now? Your name, <clears throat> do not forget the constituency that you represent. And of course, give us the question that you have at this time. Thank you. Yes, Paul Aleko, I Jennifer Jaffa from Odeda Local Government, Ogo Central Senatorial District. First and foremost, I appreciate and a big kudos to the organizers of this program. I want to stand on the existing protocol. The question of goes does, why is it so difficult for our legislators to get our concept on matters that are affecting the generality before they go around to go and assert their concept or their presence to any policy in this country? Could you come again? Seeking your consent. Yes, my concern is why is it so difficult for our legislators to get our consent, I mean the consent of the constituents, before they go ahead to give consent or give go ahead to any policy or programs that affect the masses. Oh, before they vote on, on policy. All right, so um, you just talked to the issue of no consultation, and we will be coming back shortly. But of course, I will take one more question, and then we'll take a break. Olufemi Lawson from Lagos. I want to direct my question to distinguished senator from Lagos, 
on the question of our expectations as citizens from our legislators. I want to say that if we had not had the kind of opportunity provided through this open square, I want to say that the culture of engagement between our representatives and the uh, constituents is becoming totally alien in Nigeria. The only time you find legislators coming around or representatives coming around the people, if it's not during the campaign period, it has to do with where motorcycles and air dryers are to be you know, distributed. Quite unfortunate. I think it is imperative that we begin to sit with our, you begin to sit with us, the constituents. No, how do you arrive at the conclusion that the needs of your constituents are motorcycle and pepper grinders? There are a lot of needs that ordinarily may even be less capital intensive, you know, compared to buying motorcycles and all these things that are done in the name of empowerment. I think most of these things are done to protect the regime, to secure your mandate, rather than addressing the need of the people. I think Open Square should be an opportunity to challenge our legislators on the need for a regular engagement with their constituents, even before making budget. How did you arrive at those projects you say you are lobbying into the, nat into the national budget? How are we sure that the people in that constituency of distinguished senator Balogun actually needed the road and not water? Thank you. So these are the issues that... Thank you, Femi. To, you know, Fa thank you. Thank you. Indeed, uh, these are some of the questions that you have heard from constituents. But now we will take a break. And when we return, our distinguished lawmakers are here seated to give responses to some of these issues. Thank you. Don't go away. Thank you so much for joining us again. It is Open Square, and indeed today we've had, I think, a sort of robust conversation, but it is still um, widening. And yes, with the little time we have left, we're going to go over and talk about other issues. Just so you know, this is a Daria Media production, and it is in partnership with Channels Television and Radio Now, 95.3 FM, Lagos. And of course, we are supported by the MacArthur Foundation. Joining us now is Rep. Ibrahim Obanikuru of the Etiosa Federal Constituency. And of course, we have had some questions, if I may, by the constituents before we went on that short break. But again, I will be going to the Senator Tokumbo Abiru to quickly give us um, his responses to some of these issues earlier raised before we bring it back right here to have more responses. Thank you, Senator Apiru. Okay, once again, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> and um, again, um, and, okay, the question the last um, um, speaker posed, and although he didn't mention his name because I didn't get his name, has to do with um, how do you derive the needs of the people before you put them in the budget and all of that. So let me start by first saying that I completely agree for the need for regular consultation. I mean, it's very important because you can't plan for what, I mean, you are, you are meant to be planning for the people anyway. So you must know what they need before you begin to think about what you put in the budget for them and all of that. So I can only use myself and my own experience as an example. So um, given the diversity of the constituency that I cover as well, you know, what I have had to do, even before the regular consultation, the first thing I had to do way back January last year when I, I mean, like I said, I came in December 2020. So the full year will be last year anyway. So January last year, part of what had occurred to me that, you see, if you are going to plan for people, you've got to have an idea of what you need. So I engaged um, a set of consultants to do what I would call a needs assessment of the entire district. So surveys were done, consultations were made with people, and we had over seven, over, I mean, a survey covering over 700 people. And at the end of the day, we were able to put together needs for different local government that I have. And like I said, I have five local government and 11 LCDs. So I have like a, a, a data bank of what the, the people have said their needs and all of that. Ah. But again, like my colleagues have said, I am not an executive, so the best I can do is to facilitate. So the next step that I would also take is the local government chairman. You know, they Senator Biro, I will have to take it from there. You, 
you have, you have said that the best you can do is to facilitate and indeed that's what you are doing thank you thank you so i'm bringing it right here and i would like to have um senator olubumi at the TV. yes yes senator abiru i'm going to i was just wrapping up so so i already took it away Senator Abiru, thank you so much. So I'm having Senator Olubumi Adetumbi give his response to the questions that we took before the break. Very quickly, sir. Um, the, the nature of our country... Can you put it closer? Yes. Thank the, you. There's a huge challenge in the country of shortage of resources against the large and growing population over, over the years, uh, which makes every elected official, whether relevant to that need or not, to be put on the spot to provide for those needs. And so you find legislators struggling to make constituents happy uh, in delivering functions that do not reside within their purview. And that is the problem of most legislators in the country. A lot of us are asked to provide, uh, you know, empowerment. Somebody was talking about motorcycle and, you know, what hair dryers. You? Hair dryers. For goodness sake, that's not written into the job description of a legislator. The duty of a legislator is to make laws for good governance, for peace and progress of the country. He's supposed to represent his people and vote their aspirations on national issues. The real problem we have is that the resources that is available to governments at local level, at state level, is no longer adequate for these needs. And so we get told to do that, to do this and do that, because we are just a neighbor to these constituents. Just don't knock at your door, and there they have it. And mm -hmm. as far as they are concerned, you are the miracle worker. Indeed. This Thank you, Senator Olubumi Adetumbi. We're going to come back to the issue of whether you are a miracle worker or not. But I quickly need to have uh, the representative, um, yes, Obani Koro. And of course, I think we should take off from where you have met us. And it is to ask how exactly you engage with your constituents. How do you feel the pulses of what your people truly want to be able to give it to them? Good morning, uh, Ibrahim Abanikoro. Apologies for my um, late coming. It was due to mechanical issues for my vehicle. So please accept my uh, apologies. Um, the way I relate with my constituents is that uh, I still have a campaign structure that is going on. I have coordinators across uh, wards and I have APEX members across the local government because I also run. Uh, one local government and uh, four, three LCDAs under me. So that's how we get our uh, uh, feedbacks. And we do have the meetings often. So we send them out to, and then I have a running constituency office as well, where we have constituents, uh, you know, coming, drop letters. And I also have, um, the, the, I'm on social media. And the amount of emails I get is quite um, impressive because you know, I, I represent the Koyi. Um, BI, Aja. So I have people that are very um, technology, into technology in my area. So that is also another means of feedback that I, another means to get feedback from my constituents. So uh, meetings and uh, constant communication and a running constituency office are the means I use to get my data. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think we will go to the constituents right now, and it is to have the last set of maybe constituents give uh, more questions that might, they might have had planned for this occasion. Please kindly come for watch. You know the drill. When you come, give us your name, and please ensure your constituency is well stated, as well as going straight to the point of what's raised right here. Please let's have you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here, and this is a very good opportunity for us to meet our legislators. My name is Benga Gonzalo. I'm from Lagos West, Senatorial District. I live in Lagos. Um, my question to the legislators, most importantly for those ones from Lagos, is the fact that the structures they have been talking about that they have is a structure they built 
to the parties, to their political parties. And I'm thinking that they need to strengthen the constituency offices so that those who are even not within the political parties can have the opportunity to interface with them and engage with them. This is very, very important. Thank you. That'll be all. Thank you so much. Can we have you, please? Good morning. My name is Ayodeji Ologon. My name is Olabi, okay. from Ogunwe Senatorial District. My questions go to Senator Tolu Odebi, representing Ogunwe Senatorial District. Um, Senator Odebi, we know your pedigree, and um, we know all you've done for people of Ogun West by lobbying so many federal agencies for um, empowerment. And your personal contribution to your foundation uh, in terms of education. What is the question? The question now is this. Yes, you've passed so many bills. It has gone through so many readings. Unfortunately, the executives, the executive arm has not done anything on it. Can you please lobby the executive very well? You've been doing it, but we want to lobby further so that all the bills will be assented to by the president. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, can we have you? My name is Ayo Logon. I live in Ocean State, Ocean Central Senatorial District. And I want to speak to two issues. Number one is the issue of accountability by the representatives. A lot of our representatives, irrespective of either being out of rep or Senate, find it inappropriate to be accountable to their people. And I will cite instances. I belong to a group of a society who have always made calls on representatives to come and give an account of what they do in terms of bill sponsored and even in terms of their constituency projects. But a number of times, you have senators either avoiding responses to such requests, or some of them becoming so arrogant that they give responses that are unbecoming of a representative. That's number one. Number two, earlier in this program, somebody spoke to the issue of loan, which virtually all representatives on the high seats have avoided. One of the duties of a legislator is to carry the burden of the people. If the Federal Executive Council is throwing bills at the National Assembly, requesting for loan and loan and loan and over again. And all we get is rubber stamp of such requests for loans. And the, the legislators don't go back to their people to request if they stand by those decisions or not. I think it's unbecoming and I need them to speak to it. Thank you. Please, this will be the last. Kindly let her be. Thank you. Temetayo Oyelarun from Oyo State, Oyo Central Senatorial District. Inomedo Siyawa Shofiwa. Tari Wambi, Mufeki, Bugua, and Tumboa, and the Bo, Buguntan, Sodada, my fellow to Soy Baba, Baba, a Jabi New York. What is a lie, a pay, Cash of me, Cash is fire, Cash of Kang, in Kaida, was okay, was Yaw Joa, only party, a bar, I was of Inca, Shuman, you banning with Abata, Abato, you there on Eddie, Tabaso, and Candelin care to be queer. Last year, coach, this is Sheila Ujawa. Teba facilitate. Teba obey you more. More on Ishi. I quite do allow you to have you are by Jetty Google Sa and you are. There's a lot of a project that is buried. Timon was a party from 1999 now. Teba Nipe, a soap for Lassani. Lie topic. I jerky is Thank you. That'll be all. Okay, so um, in essence, what that constituent from. Um, or your central, if I'm correct, as asked is when the lawmakers facilitate to get certain projects done um, and they do not go back to ensure that they're actually done in the case where they've actually been assented to, um, it really brings us back to the same spot of having a situation where nothing is done at the end of the day because uh, like the Yoruba proverb is rightly put in there, if you go ahead and um, kill um, um, a game and you don't go ahead again to ensure that you do all that is needed to preserve it, then every effort that you are put in there is going to waste. So, not to put all of this effort to waste, there really must be more done by the lawmakers. That's what he has said and I've simply, I think I succeeded in paraphrasing that. Now that that's said, please, again, we're going to go from one lawmaker to the other lawmaker because then it, it appears that this is just about the last session we're going to have all the responses by the lawmakers and indeed um, there's Senator Tokumbo Abiru that is also 
joining us via Zoom. Now, I think I should begin with um, Rep. Obanikuru, and it is because you're just joining to give ample opportunity for you to, you know, lend your voice to the conversation. It's been said that sometimes these things are done without them. What exactly would you say to this? Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Gwenga Danzaria. I hope I got that last name right. From Le Gonzalo, I'm sorry, my phone must have changed it. From Lagos West. Um, what I, because, uh, because of the expectation that is expected of us, so running a monthly or quarterly constituency uh, meeting can be expensive. So what I do once a year, every January, we do a town hall meeting where we invite everybody, stakeholders, wrestling associations, companies, uh, schools. We invite everybody, including politicians, to come, let us dialogue and discuss. We just had one two Mondays ago. So it's not just political, um, active politicians that we dialogue with. We try to bring everybody on board, and that's the best way to help our people. And that's the best way to get information. And that's the best way to also resolve uh, issues within the community. My community, my constituency is huge from Obalindi. All right, all thank you. Thank you, uh, Rep. Abiru. Indeed, we would have more of a time. Obanikoro, please, I beg your pardon. Okay, Rep. Obanikoro, thank you so much for that. I mean, time would not permit us. I'd rather have you go further. Quickly, Senator Tokumbo Abiru, could you speak to some of the issues that have been raised here today? And it goes from rubber stamping to um, facilitating and not coming back to ensure that the due diligence is done. And you have one minute, sir. Okay, um, we do not have audio from you. No. Kindly start no, again. Can you hear me? Kindly start again. Can you, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can now. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, yeah. clearly. So, like I said earlier, you know, I have done a needs assessment, which is the research based methodology, and I've identified some of the needs of my environment, right, of the 16 local government that I have, and I've gotten this validated by the local government chairman. So when you are speaking to their needs, you know somehow you will have narrowed it down to what it is likely to be. You can't be going to I mean, each individual, but if you have a scientific way, which is what I have done, and I have that document with me, and I've gotten it validated by all the 16 local government chairmen that I have. So when I'm doing a constituency project today, it is based on what I have agreed between myself and the, and the local government chairman. And many, many a times there are things that you know, will have been an aggregation of what the society claims they want. So Thank somehow, you. you see, I think that I am breaking that ice in that kind of Thank society. you so much. That's the bit I can to... take. Thank you so much, Sadiq okay. Labiru. And yes, um, I think I'm coming right here again, and I'll begin with uh, the distinguished Senator Kola Balogun. You have a minute to kindly t talk to us. But please, let's talk on other aspects that um, Senator Abiru and Rep. Obanikoro haven't touched on. Thank you very much. Well, um, the uh, job of a legislator can, can be quite challenging. I recall one of our friends in the audience was asking me, how did you know that the people at the uh, spare parts gates needed the road? Yes, they need that road. They actually wrote to me. The leadership of the market wrote me a letter requesting for that road. Not only that, there is a covered that has separated the market, this side of the market, from the other side of the market, which is also a problem for their business activities. Everything that I've done so far in the last uh, two and a half years has been tailored to the needs, the yearnings, the requests, the aspirations of my people. I've done some, I've facilitated some single digit interest uh, loan facility for the people in my constituency. A lot of that, that had happened. Had done training and empowerment through the IR and T value addition agricultural trading programs. The records are there. I had facilitated procurement and install installation of transformers in different communities. Some of them will tell you that they, they were in, they've been in the dark for about six years. So that's all they were asking for. Thank you. But you see, with all of that, 
you see five people saying that, oh, well, we know you've done well in terms of software, software empowerment program. They say, what about the hardware? And what do you mean by hardware? Motorcycles, dryers, Thank you. vehicles. Thank and so you. I'm going to do that also eventually because I don't want that to be my albatross at the end of the day. Thank you so much, Senator um, Kola Palogo. And indeed, hardware, software is some terminology we're picking up here today. So quickly, Rep. Isiaka. Indeed, we've had a lot, and um, we should also give some um, voice to the issue of rubber stamping. I've not heard something quite convincing from um, our legislators here today. Would you say that the Ninth Assembly truly is an appendage of the executive? Thank you very much. Uh, once again, uh, unfortunately, the way we'll be answering the questions, you know, is in at random. Um, uh, perhaps I would have spoken about that before now. You see, there is no policy, especially bills or motions, that is, with maybe investigative hearings. The public is always advertised. Perhaps this is the opportunity for me to speak to Nigerians. When we advertise it as public hearing, the essence of the public hearing is for groups, individuals, organizations, and so many interested members of the public to cause appearance to come and submit memorandum or memoranda. Would people come to Abuja to um, attend this hearing? Then, yes. How can they do that? Do you? support them to be able to come over? You see, these are matters we're talking about that really touch our hearts. I mean, matters that really touch our hearts about the nation. Is it not cheaper to have the hearings within the constituencies? No. See, you're talking about a, a committee sitting and organizing to carry out public hearings on some specific matters that are of national issues. Even after the public hearing, such committees, you see them going out for what we call outreach and oversight to have on the spot assessment. So these are venues, these are areas that the public, my brothers, my sisters, can really now even come in. It's not even compulsory your course appearance. You can even prepare your own memorandum or memoranda, send it to the Transmit committee. it across. Yes. All right, and thank you. But you still have not yes, answered yes, as to whether we have an appendix. Yes, and yes. Uh, should I, I assume that the question is being avoided? That, that's why I'm giving answers. Okay. Here. Please very quickly, sir. Okay. So now, secondly, I, maybe if they are able to say um, what is meant, because some, one of my brothers here came to say that since the existence of the National Assembly, this is the first time we'll be experiencing a high caliber, well-cultured, nurtured, educated individuals in that hollow chambers, but that is seeing them as being rubber stamped. It's still, the, because <laughs> I'm trying to be careful with the language. Um, is it a yes or a no? Ma? Because of time, is it a yes or a no? Do you it's see no, yourself? De definitely no. A no. There is thank no you so way much. the gentleman you are seeing here. Th thank you so much. I will take it away. I will take it away to the Senator Olubumi Adetumbi. And quickly, sir, you have a minute to please give some responses to some of the things that we have um, heard the constituents say today. I will speak to the subject of borrowing. Because there is this illusion that Nigeria is a wealthy country. It is not relative to its population. A very good example. Brazil and Nigeria have comparative population. The annual budget of federal budget in Brazil is about 600 billion US dollars per annum. That's about, you know, 15 times the size of budget of Nigeria, which is less than 40 billion US, US dollars to service 200 million people comparative to what you have in Brazil. So the issue of borrowing becomes necessary when your resources cannot carry your developmental needs. You have to step out and look for resources. I think what Nigeria should do 
is they should follow their money. So if we do not, if I do not make enough money as a family, yes. I do not spend beyond what I have made. Why do we have to go borrow to add up to what we have to spend? Why can't we just got why what do we, we have, have to spend? Why do we have banks? Why do banks lend? Why do they collect deposits at low interest rates and then they take it out at higher interest rate? They make their margins okay. and business goes Thank on. Thank you so much, Senator. So it, it also goes for nations. I'll take it away. And then I think it's the same conversation that I will be taking to um, Rep. No, that's the Senator um, Bandele. No, it's Rep Bandele. Uh, apologies again. <laughs> Thank you. So kindly take it away from Senator Adetumbi and please give context to the issue of borrowing that he has started. Well, I, I agree with him um, substantially. The only area where I may a little bit disagree uh, is that, um, you know, there are times when it is believed, and I, I am one of those who believe so, that we can do a lot of um, other cutting of expenses locally to reduce our borrowing, not to eliminate borrowing completely. It may not be feasible, but I think that um, there, are, there are times where, but, but when, when my, my friend was talking about the house being a rubber stamp on borrowing, I want him to understand the fact that most of these monies come with the project that they are meant to be executed. And uh, most of those projects are infrastructural projects like railway projects, um, road projects, which are visible, which are things that we can track. So it is, um, we have to maintain the balance. Yes, we should do less of borrowing, but we cannot totally eliminate borrowing because of our level development. But, but quickly, please, let me talk about this constituency issue. Somebody said that um, uh, they, you know, we maintain party structures that the public cannot access. And I want to advise the public, whenever anybody is elected into office, stop seeing that person as PDP reps, uh, AP Thank you. senator. Thank you. We are representing of the, the of people, people, and you should be able to accept my constituency office. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, for want of time, okay. I will just take that away and go to the senator Tolu or Debbie. Kindly give us one minute your submissions. Thank you uh, once again for having us, and let me thank the audience who also participated. Let me take it from where my distinguished senator Adi Tumbi talked about. To be honest with you, there is nobody that is not concerned about the borrowings that the country is on. But you have to also understand holistically what the situation is. The truth of the matter is that we are a very, very unproductive country. I think that was the first thing that really shocked me when I came into the Senate and interfaced with a lot of the ministries. You see that we are not productive. The majority of our resources goes to pay salaries. Thank you so much, distinguished Senator Tolu or Debbie Ye. I will not be able to take more than that. But the issue of our lack of productivity is well noted. And on that note, we are going to the Aga Africa representative. And um, she is Deborah Omoja for the coordinator of the Ibadan chapter. Please, let's have you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deborah Itsoa Omoja for and I'm here representing Yaga Africa on behalf of the Oyo State Coordinator, Mr. Kwega Tukumbo. I would like to thank Daria Mida and the coordinators of this event for this timely and very important session. Deborah, you have one minute. Okay. Um, first of all, I would love to may help our legislators understand that um, your, uh, your function, according to our uh, expectations, is that you're functioning towards the executive arm and also the people. It's a two-way thing. And I love the fact whereby most of the reps, or some of the reps and some of the senators, have the, um, devised means in which they can actually meet their people. The question is, who are the people you meet? Who are the caliber of the people you meet? Is it the top nobles of the society? Or even those at the grassroots? And just like a senator mentioned earlier, how do you know, how do you know what your people need before you even spell it out to them? or even represent them over there at Abuja. Abuja is not the only place. Abuja was not the, the constituent that voted you. The people that voted you are back here at the grassroots. Thank you. I need to listen to them. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Deborah. And that's the big we can take from Iaga Africa. Of course, a very engaging two hours we have had today. Thank you so much. The very distinguished um, um, constituents that we have had come from Ogun. Oyo, Osho, Lagos, Ekiti, Ondo, and that have come here today to let your 
problems be known to your lawmakers. And indeed, I would like to say a big thank you for the presence and of course the resources that have been provided today by our very distinguished lawmakers. And I'd like to start just because of proximity by my left but with uh, the Rep. Um, Obani Koro and indeed go to Senator Kola Balogo and of course Rep. Isiaka as well as Senator Adetumbe as well as the representative um, Bami Dele and take it also to the Senator Tolu Odebeyi while not forgetting the distinguished Senator Tokumbo um, Abiru who has joined us over Zoom. That's the bit we can take. This is Open Square. Once again, it is the first in a series of six and we have five more coming in other five geopolitical zones of the country. You should look out for that. And this is of the Southwest region. My name is Melanie Ishola and it has been an indeed pleasure to be able to moderate this today. Once again, Open Square is a production of Daria Media in partnership with Channels Television and Radio Now, 95.3 FM, as well as the support of the MacArthur Foundation. Good afternoon. This is Channels Television. You've been watching a live coverage of the Open Square Town Hall from Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital.